Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here, and I'd like to welcome you to another of our Clinical Insights videos where today we're gonna to be focusing on tendon and ligament injuries. In particular, how do you tell the difference between tendon and ligament injuries? Both of them can cause uh, injury and pain associated with joint movements because they're both very close to joints, but they usually occur from different mechanical forces or different types of overloads or various different types of factors that might lead to those different types of injuries. The reason it's important to make this distinction is we're going to treat these differently as well. So let's take a look at the structure and function of both tendons and ligaments and what they do and look at how they may get injured and how we can tell the difference between them. So let's take a look at tendon tissue first. Tendons, as you know, connect muscle to bone. That's their primary function. Tendons have a higher concentration of collagen tissue in them, not quite as much elastin. Remember, both ligaments and tendons are composed of collagen and elastin. There's a greater degree of elastin in ligament tissues. And this is kind of interesting because a lot of people would assume that ligaments are uh, stiffer than tendons, but they're not. Ligaments actually have a little bit more elastic capability to allow joint stresses. Tendons are different. Their primary function is to transmit a contraction force from the muscle to the bone. So when the muscle contracts, it needs to transmit that force to the bone. So if the tendon was elastic, it would be inefficient in transmitting that load and getting the bone to move. Now notice there's also quite a difference in structure from a lot of different types of tendons. Looking here in the shoulder, we can see the short, broad tendons of the rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus located right here. But then look just to the side of it here, this long pencil-like tendon from the long head of the biceps brachii, which takes a right angle turn across the top of the humerus here to go over to its attachment on the supraglenoid tubercle. So those tendons are very different in the way they transmit forces. And note, since this is sort of going, taking a right angle turn here, and if we turn this around a little bit, we can see this. Look at how much potential friction there would be of this tendon as it pulls down on these bones going across to its attachment side over here. This is one of the things that may lead to tendon injury is excessive compressive forces from bones that it's rubbing against. So this usually happens in, some, in more of our chronic onset injuries. Now do note, you can have muscle strains that involve tendons, and a lot of times there will be a strain or a tear right at that musculotendinous junction because this is a tissue interface which is not quite as strong as some of the adjacent tissues around there. And changing from one tissue type to another makes that a weak point. So a lot of times there can be a tear there. But most commonly, our tendon injuries are more chronic and have to do more with repetitive overload forces. So we'll see this when we look at several different types of tendon pathologies that may occur uh, throughout the body. So just keep in mind, tendon pathologies tend to be more chronic onset and chronic overload, and the ligament injuries tend to be more acute, sudden high force loads that cause sudden damage to those ligaments. So that means a good clinical history is really important in making that distinction between that factor of ligament and tendon injury. Okay, now let's jump down to the uh, knee for just a second and take a look at the ligaments around the knee. This is a common place to look for ligament injuries because they're very common here around the knee. So remember again, the primary function of a ligament is to attach bone to bone. So it's designed to give additional stability between adjacent bones. Here in the knee, we have a lot of ligament structures. And notice that many times these ligaments are really contiguous with the joint capsule. So here we've got fibers that are highlighted here in green of the tibial collateral ligament or medial collateral ligament, it's frequently called. And that uh, medial collateral ligament is really blended in very intricately with the joint capsule itself. So those are really all trying to generate that same degree of stability and maintain good structural function around the joint. Other ligaments like this smaller ligament here, we highlight the medial patellofemoral ligament designed to uh, give some stability between the, the patella and the femur. All of these ligaments are resisting a particular type of force. So for example, if we take this medial collateral ligament and we look at forces that might injure that ligament, something where there's a force coming from the outside of the knee here and hitting it on that side and bending the knee inward, that would be resisted by this medial collateral ligament. This is called a valgus force. And this is one of the things that frequently leads to knee ligament injuries is an excessive valgus force. So again, back to our history, we're going to look frequently for sudden onset injuries to be the cause of ligament injury. 
Now, when it comes to identifying the difference between tendon and ligament injuries, we mentioned one key factor a moment ago, and that's the history. That's so very important to try to identify where those tissues might have been injured from certain types of forces, either chronic onset forces or more acute sudden onset loading. So history is a key factor. Another important factor is palpation. What you do with your hands and identifying where that tissue is most sensitive and knowing where the you know knowing the anatomy of that region and knowing what tissues are in that area that can help give you a good indicator. But there's places where you've got tendon tissue and ligament tissue right next to each other or sometimes lying directly over each other. It's hard to make that distinction between them and that's when we'll opt for various different types of assessment and evaluation procedures through physical examination. So for example, when we combine the findings from range of motion tests or maybe some uh, special orthopedic test, that will be really important for making that distinction. So for example, with a tendon injury, we know when we put a load on that muscle, it's likely to be painful with a tendon. So it might be painful when you move in active motions. It might be painful even in passive motions if that tendon's getting pulled or stretched. And it's also likely to be painful when there's no motion at all at the joint, but you put a load on that muscle, like during a manual resistive test. And especially if you palpate that tendon while you're putting those loads on it, that can also give some really good indicators if there's primarily a tendon tissue involved. Ligaments, on the other hand, are going to act a little bit differently. They're going to be most painful during motion of the joint, so during active motions and passive motions, that ligament is likely to be painful. But the ligaments most of the time are not going to be painful with a manual resistive test because you're simply putting a load on the muscle tendon unit, but you're not additionally loading the ligament when you do the manual resistive test. So when you combine the findings from those different procedures, that's another important factor to help make that distinction between tendon and ligament injuries. Now, there are a variety of special orthopedic tests used to identify, especially ligament injuries. There's a lot more of those tests that are focused on identifying ligament injuries. And they're particularly helpful because what they usually do is put specific stresses on that ligament in the direction where it is most vulnerable. And if there is pain reproduced or some degree of instability or mushy feeling to that movement, that's usually an indicator of ligament damage. So those are some of the key characteristics that help you make a distinction between tendon and ligament injuries. Now, in uh, future videos, we're going to take, some take a look at some of the treatment strategies that will be most effective in addressing tendon or ligament injuries as well. So I'd love to hear what you think about this. Please feel free to leave a comment or ask, uh, leave questions in the comment box down below, and I'll be happy to get to them and address them for you as well. And if you're looking for some help in identifying some of the distinctions between different types of soft tissue injuries, I've got this great assessment cheat sheet that'll be really helpful for you making some distinctions about what type of tissue has been injured, and that will gonna, that's going to help you dramatically in choosing an appropriate treatment plan. You can find that over on our website at academyofclinicalmassage.com slash cheat. All right, great. See you in the next one.